The case of the insecure apartment Wi-Fi. Next on Ask the Tech Guy. Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can sure they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. Leo Laporte here. Hope you uh, had a nice Thanksgiving. And now here we are back at work. This was a great question uh, that happened on the radio show a couple of weeks ago. And I wanted to go uh, into a little more detail with it. But I just I thought the question was so fantastic. It came from Michael in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, Michael lives in an apartment and uh, in an apartment complex where they very kindly uh, supply Wi-Fi to everybody in the apartment complex. But he said, there's a problem. I feel like it might be insecure because it's just Wi-Fi. And the login is his apartment number or anybody's apartment number. And then the phone number of the front office at the apartment complex. In other words, <laughs> anybody who lives at this apartment complex knows everybody else's Wi-Fi password and can log in. Furthermore, it wouldn't take a criminal genius to figure this out. And if somebody could drive up to near your apartment, they could easily log into your Wi-Fi. What's the harm in that? Well, uh, there actually, there's a lot of problems here. Uh, I don't, I guess the Wi-Fi traffic is encrypted because they're using a password. We're going to hope that the people who set this up, and I don't have a huge amount of confidence because this is kind of a goofy setup. Uh, I would hope that the people who set up used WPA2 encryption. So at least you'd need the login to, to get into that network. But once somebody's on your network, um, they can see you and they, they can see some of what you're doing. And more importantly, they could use that ability to attack you to figure out, probe your weaknesses and maybe figure out if there's some way to get stuff off your computer, things like that. It's a risky situation. It's not so very different from being on an open Wi-Fi at a coffee shop, frankly. Uh, the first thing I would do is go to the front office and say, hey, can I change my password? They may have it uh, default to the office phone number because they assume you're going to change it. So that'd be the first thing I'd say. Can I change my password? Because I'd like to have something a little bit more secure. But even then, you are in effect on the shared network and everybody else in the apartment complex is on the same network as you. If one bad apple lives at your apartment complex, and I bet somebody there's a bad apple, uh, they, could, they could do bad things to you. This is why you need your own router. You have to use the router that they provide. You're logging into that when you use your login. But you should have another router in between your computers, your uh, your smartphone, your anything you're using in your apartment on Wi-Fi, between that and the outside world. There are a couple of ways uh, to do this. When I'm on an open Wi-Fi access point, I will generally use a travel router. And that's a little different than using a VPN. The idea of a travel router, a VPN, of course, encrypts your traffic um, and makes you a little bit harder to attack when you're on a VPN in a, in a coffee shop, say. A travel router is even more difficult to attack because it's effectively a barrier, a hardware barrier between you and the rest of that network. Travel routers are designed to work on Wi-Fi access points, you can log into a captive portal, like at a hotel where you know you have to sign the agreement, say, yeah, I'm only going to use this for the right things, and you put in your hotel room number and your last name. They're designed to be able to log into those, but then to route your traffic through the router. This is, this is a, a fairly inexpensive one that I've used. A lot of companies make these. This thing actually has a, a great name. It comes from Wi-Fi Consulting in Washington, D.C., their, their website is tinyhardwarefirewall.com, and they call this one the Kadesh. All of their routers have names after famous military battles. Uh, I don't know why that is, but that's the case. This, this thing is, is kind of a cool device. 
Um, as you can see, it has Ethernet ports, and I'll explain why. It can easily be powered via this USB, even directly from your laptop, or you can plug it into the wall. That's generally what I'll do. I'll get to the hotel or the cruise ship or the coffee shop, plug it in. Uh, I'll log into this via Wi-Fi, and it has a configuration interface that lets me say here's the access point information in your case here's my apartment number and my the phone number of the front office and then it will log in use that as its uh, wi-fi as its internet connection and then you can either connect via ethernet or even by wi-fi to this this is going to provide a barrier uh, this company also offers a vpn and even tor for privacy so it's really kind of a, a cool little device it's about forty dollars for the hardware uh but in order to use this you have to buy their service you can buy something similar from companies that don't offer a, a yearly service cost uh, but tinyhardwarefirewall.com will give you some idea so that's one way to do it i'll tell you what steve gibson does this would be a probably for you know the problem with something like this is it's designed to be portable lightweight low power as a result it's maybe not the fastest thing in the world if you want full throughput you probably want to look at something like this this is what steve gibson recommends this is from a company called netgate and it's a firewall appliance it would work best if you had uh, an ethernet jack in your apartment you could connect it to but you can do it with wi-fi with a uh, maybe some additional uh, hardware to you know give it a wi-fi uh connection the idea though the thing that makes this so cool is it's using a open source router program called PFSense, which is widely considered to be the best security tool out there. Uh, it's open source. It gives you a lot of control. And this device is a little more expensive than the uh, Kadesh, which is only $40. This is around 200 bucks, I think. But uh, it is a PFSense router that gives you all sorts of firewall protection security it is really powerful so this would protect you absolutely against any attacks coming in through the apartment complexes wi-fi including from your neighbors uh, pf sense is really good stuff uh, you can even run pf sense off an old computer so if you have a computer lying around that you're not using it doesn't have to be particularly powerful this little appliance device is not but you could use that computer put pf sense on it give that computer access to the apartment complex's wi-fi and then use it to be a router that you log into with all your devices internally um, so th this is the easiest solution this little portable router from tiny hardware firewall but the SG-1100 firewall appliance from NetGate, uh, maybe a little faster, a little bit more robust, you just leave it plugged in. In a sense, what you're doing is you've got a router in the office complex's front office, the apartment complex's front office, that is your ostensibly your Wi-Fi router when you're logging in. What you'd really like to do is have yet another router in between that and your devices internally. So any router will help you do that. But I think a router with some security features uh, is going to be a great idea. That will let you uh, kind of really eliminate the chance that any neighbors might try to probe your devices, see what you're up to. Uh, so there's really three levels. You could start, the simplest, easiest would be use a VPN for sure. Cause, you know, Pretend you're on open Wi-Fi access point, you're in a coffee shop. That's the first thing to do. You want to get a little more sophisticated, have a little more control, maybe a little bit more secure. Uh, this uh, travel router from tinyhardwarefirewall.com. And then you want the ultimate situation. Uh, this is going to be give you the best possible security. It, uh, I mean, this people, uh, I would use this even if you didn't have this crazy situation. <laughs> the SG-1100 firewall appliance running PF sense. It's a great question, Michael. It's an unusual, I would hope, an unusual situation. I think it may be the first thing to do is to talk to the apartment complex and see why they've set it up this way. Maybe they don't even understand that it's, you know, fundamentally insecure to have a Wi-Fi access password that everybody knows. It would be no different than if I were, you know, use set up my Wi-Fi here in the office with no password. Then somebody parking in our parking lot could get on our Wi-Fi and start to, you know, interact with our computers on the network. You're in that exact same situation. It's as if you don't have a password at all since it's such an easily guessed password. So get some, uh, get some additional protection. Uh, our show today brought to you by LastPass. 
We know you can't trust your most valuable data with just any company. That's why we choose LastPass for identity and access management. And by the way, we're not the only ones. LastPass, really strong reviews everywhere, including in the G2 Fall Grid Reports, a leading peer-to-peer -peer review site. They do unbiased user reviews on leading software solutions. Leverage over 100 policies and advanced security features. Visit LastPass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. LastPass.com slash twit. That's Ask the Tech Guy, our last show in November. We'll see you in December. Have a great week. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm your tech guy. If you've got a question, email askthetechguy at twit.tv. Take care. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email askthetechguy at twit.tv.